Vikes Now, I am Dustin Baker. I'm here with Dustin Klug, and both the Dustins are coming at you before week nine. Vikings Saints, the Saints are division leading at five and four. Vikings are game and a half back of the Lions at uh, five and four as well. Dustin, my man, how are you? It's been uh, what, a couple months since you've been on. Yeah, and glad to be back. I, I love being on the show, and yeah, we're going to talk some Vikings football. Absolutely. The Vikings surprisingly took care of business at the Falcons. On the whole, it wouldn't be surprising that the Vikings would beat the Falcons, but they switched quarterback midstream to a dude uh, who had been in the building for five days, four days with the playbook, and it was one of those games that no matter what Josh Dubs, Dubs does from here on out, uh, we're just going to look back and remember this as the Josh Dobbs games. Hopefully, it is a springboard into more than that, but I'm going to start right out of the gate to ask you about that. I had this question that I circulated on Twitter or the X app, uh, let's assume that Jaron Hall is healthy in a week or so, and I don't know, maybe fast forward and peek into the future at the Bears or the Raiders game. Who should be the QB1 based on what you've seen from Jaron Hall, Nick Mullins, and Josh Dubs or Josh Dobbs? Which guy is it in your estimation? Who should it be? I think our realistic option right now, um, especially going into this week, is just going with the hot hand in Josh Dobbs. I know he's only been here for, you know, a couple of days now. And, you know, he led a game winning drive on the road in a tough environment against one of the better defenses in the NFL. And I think that really shows a lot about, you know, Dobbs as an athletic quarterback, you know, just a smart uh, rocket scientist. Um, you know, I think he has the physical attributes too as a passer. You know, once he learns that playbook, gets the timing down, I, I don't think he'll be, you know, MVP caliber uh, per se, but I think he'll be serviceable enough to, you know, get us into the dance possibly later in the year. Um, but Jaron Hall, he looked good on that second drive um, before he got hurt. Uh, I would like to see uh, you know, if there was a little bit more to him, you know, for that whole game, just kind of see him through the whole game. Uh, we never got that opportunity. I don't know if we ever will, you know, if mm -hmm. bearing Dobbs stay healthy. Uh, and then as far as Nick Mullins, I think he's just going to be our <laughs> backup. And I think uh, Jaron Hall is going to be dropped down to QB3 again. It's really bizarre. I kid you not. If we would have hopped on this show together five weeks ago, we'd be talking about, well, if something happens to Kirk Cousins, Nick Mullins is the next man up. We'd be having a two-way conversation. And now those men, those men, by happenstance, aren't even in the picture, so to speak. It's it's to Jaron Hall and Josh Dobbs. What would you say to somebody that said, you know what, Dustin, you, Dustin, not this Dustin, uh, this is a golden opportunity to see Jaron Hall uh, handed to you on a platter because Kirk Cousins is out. How would you respond to that? Uh, it's, it's crazy. I don't know how I would respond to that. I'd be speechless. I'd be like, Kirk gets hurt. You know, that's, that's <laughs> an unfathomable, unfathomable thing to mm -hmm. think about. And, you know, Nick Mullins, he was supposed to be QB two. Jaron Hall really wasn't supposed to even play this year. Uh, you know, if we were to get a playoff spot, you know, rest our starters last game or two, you know, that, that was supposed to be Nick Mullins that last couple games. Um, and yeah, we weren't supposed to see Jaron Hall at all this year. And we got two for two drives on Sunday, 11 plays. And then we got to see Josh Dobbs. Yeah. With, with Dobbs, I think because there's a sample size now at the Cardinals, I think he can go about three different ways. He can really turn back into a pumpkin and be kind of like Brett Hundley, the Packers backup where it just never amounts to much. He can be in that middle kind of like Gardner Minshew or Taylor Heineke, both mobile quarterbacks, so to speak, that are just kind of decent QB twos, QB ones in a pinch. Or he can be like Steve McNair, who, who stylistically is like from my childhood and teenage years, where if he finds this system of the Vikings and latches onto it, he could actually be, you know, a, a, a starter for the next several years. I don't know if the Vikings would buy into that, perhaps, but he really, if he can just get his fumbles out of con, under control, that's his his main sin right now. And it sounds like you're endorsing riding the hot hand, which the Vikings will do. The decision is made kind of easy because Jaron Hall is in the concussion protocol. So there was no controversy this week, but we're... One shitty game is from Dobbs away from having this discussion, uh, an honest to goodness one about which way should they go? Because we know for sure Kirk isn't coming back this year. All of that said, um, be, it's it's a I have a dicey question for you because we don't know what's going to happen on Sunday against the Saints. But knowing what you know, no cousins. Mullins is on IR for however long. Jaron Hall looked good for a drive. 
Josh Dobbs looked interstellar in the second half. What is your reasonable expectations for these Vikings for the rest of 2023? I think that if Josh Dobbs has the same type of performance as he did in like the third, fourth quarter, you know, forget the first half of that game where he fumbled two or three times through interception, had a safety, you know, that was not ideal. Uh, we were lucky we weren't down, you know, any more than two scores in that game. Otherwise, I think it would have been over. But if he can just keep being consistent throughout the year, just keep – uh, not turning the ball over. That's all that we ask. And I know that was a big problem uh, in the first half of the season. Uh, we kind of turned the ship a little bit uh, with that. And, you know, thankfully we have. Uh, and we've been winning games because of that. You know, we're on a four-game winning streak uh, with less turnovers. It's pretty obvious. So, yeah, I think it's not out of the uh, equation to be making the playoffs with Dobbs as your QB1, especially when – you didn't have your wide receiver one, your wide receiver two, I guess. And then you have Jordan Addison starting. You don't have your left tackle. You know, you're just, your offense is just a mess going into this Atlanta game. And you still come out, you know, with 31 points, you know, after a horrible first half, uh, you just got to ride the hot hand in Josh Dobbs. Um, I think once everybody's somewhat healthy, it's going to be a little bit better overall. Uh, in all three phases of uh, the team. And then I think if, you know, hypothetically, if Kirk was still available, still healthy, still the Iron Man that he was, I think that playoffs would, you know, there's no doubt that we would be making that um, with Josh Dobbs. You know, there's still a question, you know, he could have a dud against the Saints, hopefully not, but, you know, that's it's just something in the realm of possibilities. It would be really weird if he had a full week of preparation, which still isn't a lot to learn an entire offense, it'd be really weird if he came out and sucked after he did pretty damn well for what, an hour and a half of real life time without really knowing that the players or the playbook. So it would be really backward and bizarre if, you know, we're like, well, what happened to Dobbs? Is he's too prepared now or what's the deal? So I, I think, like I, I, I know we're going to grow tired of the fumbles and I'm hoping that's something that alas can be coached out by Kevin O'Connell and, and Wes Phillips. And I think that's what we're going to have to just wait and see if the turnovers, because we just got over the hump of mostly fixing that problem. Truth be told, the Vikings are still turning the ball over about once per game in this recent win streak, but it doesn't matter when your defense is forcing the turnovers. In the first five games, they were one and four. They were turning over the ball, usually on the first drive or in the first quarter. And then that was it. They weren't forcing turnovers of their own until they got to the Panthers game. So if you're, if you're going to have your one ghastly fumble, go ahead and do it or your pick. Uh, but then you got to make up for it. You got to grab one of your own or you got to, you know, get an interception. And I think that's been the, I know that's been the difference is this defense has become opportunistic and it wasn't really doing that out of the gate. All right. Here's another question. I got two more for you, Dustin. When you have somebody like Josh Dobbs, who we're not really sure if he was a supreme outlier for two quarters of football or even Jaron Hall coming back, you need usually a ground game running backs to support an offense that doesn't have a franchise QB one like Kirk was, or, you know, name your Josh Allen, name your quarterback of choice. Usually you need some semblance of a rushing attack. And the Vikings don't have that. Uh, Alexander Madison, bless his heart, seems like he was best suited for an RB2 gig behind Dalvin Cook. Uh, and now Cam Akers tore, ruptured his ACL just like Kirk a week ago. How do the Vikings fix the running game? Is it, or is it just the way it is? At this point, I don't know if it's too late to fix the running game. But as you alluded to before, I think Alexander Madison, great guy. But I think his best role is a RB2, you know, just kind of that uh second second option uh to the rb1 you know when delvin cook was rb1 mm -hmm. uh I, cam Akers, he was great for us uh in the short time that he's been playing a couple games um yeah alexander madison i don't know if there's any fixing in that you know he's had half a season to fix something but Obviously, you haven't. Uh, I don't know if we go with free agent or practice squad bringing up Dwayne McBride. Uh, I know he's been kind of sketchy here and there. You know, if we would, uh, he he was a seventh round flyer. You know, Quasi mm -hmm. had a starting grade on him, and obviously he's been on the practice squad since. Um, 
Chandler, I think he's going to get a couple more opportunities on offense. Uh, I think he'll probably take that Cam Akers role, um, you know, in the passing game. Not a great pass protector, but, you know, that's what Alexander Madison, I think, is for. So we'll, we'll see how the run game does against the Saints. I, I don't have their stats in front of me on how good their uh, run defense is. Um, about middle of the pack, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, Alexander Madison, he's gaining, you know, maybe 40 yards a game, a little more than that. Um, hopefully we can get that running because if you want to run play action, which the Vikings offense has been using heavily throughout the past couple of years, ever since practically Kirk has been here because he's a lead at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you have to get a round game running to, get the play action to even work. Yeah. And somehow when Kirk was in charge, the play action was still working, which was hilarious uh, because the run game wasn't really doing much. Um, There is this hope that with Josh Dobbs in the saddle, he can chip in, you know, 30, 35 rushing yards per game. Cause he does like to scamper. And in doing that, it should keep the rest of the defensive line honest and maybe open up a few gaps for Madison or Chandler. It sounds like on the whole, you don't expect there to be too much grandiose improvement. Is that correct? This is what we got. Yeah. I think what, what we've seen the first couple of games, you know, up to the halfway point of the season, I think that's what we're going to get for the rest of the year. Okay. That's fair. I think the, the other big hope, next to perhaps Josh Dobbs changing how the run game is, is that Ty Chandler would just suddenly be good. Uh, he's the fastest Vikings running back uh, on the roster right now. And Dwayne McBride in a pinch, I suppose, can be promoted. But I swear to God, when I watched him in the preseason, he just looked like a fullback that wasn't quite as you know bulky. And I was like, this ain't going to do it. And then uh, Miles Gaskin was dropped today by the Rams. I wouldn't be surprised one iota if he comes back in an RB3 capacity. All right, Saints Vikings a week nine. It it seems like Justin Jefferson probably won't be back. If you trust uh, Tom Pelissero's reporting, I think it's a reasonable or hopeful maybe for the Broncos game, which is uh, you know a week from this weekend in prime time. With all of that said, give me your thoughts on Viking Saints and your formal prediction, good sir. Uh, with my thoughts, you know, I don't know if this is a Josh Dobbs, you know, dud game. Uh, you, you never know. You never know. I mean, against the Saints, you know, pretty good defense. Um, I, like you said, middle of the pack for run defense. I think their pass defense is a little better. Yes. Um, but you know, without Jefferson, I'm guessing without Osborne too, we don't know their practicing statuses yet. Um, and possibly without TJ Hawkinson too. I know he had a rib injury, so that offense is really going to be, you know, not to its full potential. So we'll, we'll see how Josh Dobbs does with that, you know, makeshift offense. Um, I don't expect this game to be really high scoring either. Like it was, you know, against the Falcons, like a 31, 28 type game. I think this will definitely be a 14, 17 type game, you know, pretty boring to our standards. Um, but other than that, you know, this is going to be a real uh, test for Josh Dobbs, you know, being at home against an okay defense. Um, yeah, well, we'll see. And I think this is the first time that the Vikings have played the Saints at U.S. Bank Stadium at noon. I think all the other times that they played them has been a primetime game. <laughs> so I guess you can say that's a plus, too. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have for uh, – this week's game. So Vikings win it by about three. Is that correct? Is that, or I'll this... say the Vikings win, you know, 17 to 14. I think okay. it'll be a boring game. Okay. It's uh that's cool. We'll take a, when, when you're down to nubbins at quarterback and, you know, astronauts, you'll take wins. Even if they feel like they're at soldier field, every game where they're gritty and nasty. That's how I was feeling in the Falcons game. I, I was watching the game with my uncle. I was like, they just got to find a way to win. Who cares how it looks? Uh, the weird part, when you were rattling off all of those men that are injured, Jefferson, maybe Hawkinson, maybe Derisaw, probably Osborne, when Cousins was the quarterback, like after that Chiefs game, if we would have talked about that infirmary, we would have been like, oh, God, there's no way we're going to beat whoever we're playing next. But somehow there is all of this, all of a sudden, this sentiment that it's like, well, we won't have Jefferson, might not have Hawkinson, Derisaw might be out. Osborne's probably going to be out. We could probably still do it. Where did that come from in your estimation? Because I guarantee you, we would have been sitting here saying, nope, 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 about one month ago. 
Yeah, like, like you said, there was a lot of doubt in people's minds that, you know, we would not win a single game, especially when Jefferson was out. You know, when he got on IR, I think every Vikings fan was like, okay, yeah, we're not we're not winning a single game while he's out. And look, we went 4-0, and, <laughs> and we went 1-0 without Cousins. You know, it's – I think Kevin O'Connell really has brought that – um vibe in the locker room just he's he's really that glue that makes the team and I think that's you know the team rallies around Kevin O'Connell I think it's Kevin O'Connell's legacy game against the Falcons you know his play calling was elite you know just the circumstances too Mm -hmm. um but I think Kevin O'Connell definitely was uh the glue to everything given every situation you know having a makeshift offense and you know the defense finally coming into uh, fruition. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how he does against the Saints in you know the next couple of weeks. Hopefully, we can dance around, flirt around with the playoffs, and yeah, see what we can do. It will always be funny to me that on this show and other uh, media that I consumed, Vikings themed anyway, for the first month, five weeks, we said, God, if they just stop these turnovers, they can be good. And I got it got I got sick of saying that because it sounded like it was making me look like a dumbass. And then finally, they got kind of a handle on the turnovers and started forcing them on their own. And it was right. Correct. The whole time that all they really had to do was stop with the boneheadedness. All right, sir. uh, Where can we find you on Twitter and TikTok and Instagram? I think you use that one, too. Yeah, so on Twitter, I am that Vikings fan too for the backup account. And then uh, TikTok, it's just that Vikings fan. Okay. And then Instagram, I believe it's the same thing, that Vikings fan. You guys can follow over on there. I do lots of Vikings content for TikTok. I go to pretty much all the Vikings games I can, get a fan experience, and upload it from there. Fantastic. All right, man. <clears throat> Uh, you you hit my line when you want to come back. If you want to come back next week and talk about the Broncos, so be it. The week after that is the Bears, uh, but the Vikings do indeed take on the Saints. Uh, who is like we were talking about the defense? They rank uh, ninth in passing defense DVOA and seventeenth in rushing defense DVOA. So it's two good defenses. Now we can call the Vikings that going at it. So Derek Carr versus Josh Dobbs. All right, sir. We'll talk to you soon. You have a wonderful rest of the week. All right. For sure. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Later.